Hello everyone, my name is Asaf. I've been working at VIA for the past year as a full stack engineer. Just like other speakers here at the conference, I'm an Offic alumni. I served for six years first as a cybersecurity engineer and then as a software team leader. Hi guys, I'm Shachar. I've been working at VIA for the past year and a half as a product manager for the rider side applications. Um, and let's get it started. We are going to talk about how we scale up at VIA. We'll start with a little background on VIA and its scaling up challenges. And then we'll choose one problem, suggest a generic solution, and end up the session by implementing it. Cool. So a short background, but first a question. So who came here today um, using public transportation? Okay. Who came here using their private car and student traffic? Okay, so as you probably experience daily, your um, uh, public transportation and your morning commute can improve dramatically. Um, and in fact, if at the beginning of the 20th century, the biggest invention was the car. The fact that each one of you has at least one car at home is actually affecting our daily lives by um, air pollution, uh, congestion, and losing a lot of hours in traffic every day. We at VIA want to solve that problem. We basically want to minimize the amount of vehicles in each and, ev in each and every road um, and maximize the potential of each and every vehicle. So essentially powering the, the world's most efficient shared ride service and, ge and actually gen generate um, a mobility operating system. Our service is kind of like imagine like a dynamic and smart money chowut. We basically let riders select an address, we send them to the nearest corner, and we match them with a vehicle which is going their way and along with other riders without taking them outside of their, their road. So where can you find VIA? So right now you can find VIA in New York, in Chicago, in Washington, in London, in Amsterdam. We operate over one million rides. Uh, monthly. Um, we essentially want to have obtained world domination, right? We want to expand to as many cities as we can. Um, and that's actually a challenge because we want to expand to as many cities, but expanding to many cities requires a lot of work. Also, there's an ongoing need by existing public transportation companies and existing cities and municipalities that want a smarter transportation solution. So essentially, VIA doesn't have to be the operator, right? We don't have to operate the service ourselves. We can just partner with external companies, which is either cities, as I said, or public transportation companies, and provide them our solution. But the way we do it is in various modules, because some companies already have some sort of cloud solution, some sort of application, and some don't have anything. They just want to have the VIA solution branded and tailored to their needs. Um, so we've created different product tiers for that. So essentially, if a company like companies that you know, Eged, Kavim, the municipality of the city you live in or working, want to work with us, we basically can provide them the VIA solution in various ways. If they don't have any application, we can provide them the full suite of um, of the VIA core, along with branded, what you may call white-labeled applications. Um, if, the, if the partner already has a sort of an application, a sort of a service, for instance, a private ride service or buses service, they can integrate with us by getting our matching algorithm. And the staff will actually discuss in his part of the lecture um, and give one problem and one solution to how we can partner with as many partners um, in an efficient and uh, reusable way. So we don't have to tailor for each partner their own specific needs and just do one change in one location in order to grow um, quickly. Now, the fact that we work with various partners means that we have a lot of needs. You all probably know that. The bigger the stakeholder pool, the, the bigger um, the product requirements. Um, but also mobility and transportation is a very unique um, industry. 
because think about the, um, the stakeholders themselves. So think about a mayor who guaranteed to, to the citizens of his city um, a specific solution for mobility. Think about legislation. So we need to comply with the legislation around uh, transportation in a given country or city. Um, we also want to give the citizens the best solution for them. Also, when a partner comes to us, they have in mind a specific use case. So it could be a shuttle-like service. So some partners came to us and said, hey, Via, we want you to operate the service between, um, between the science park and the train station. So it's kind of like a shuttle. It's a pretty fixed route. Um, so that's one use case. A different use case can be a tourist-based service. So the city already has um, um, some sort of service to transport um, its citizens from A to B, but they don't have a good enough solution for, for tourists um, around the city. Um, even if we take our own operated um, cities like New York, the use case between Manhattan and the outer boroughs, so the Bronx, um, Brooklyn, is very different from inner Manhattan. And last, um, no, so. Another point is uh, the scale of the city. So we could operate a city, um, a, a small-scale city, so think about like 60 riders a day, um, versus large-scale cities. So we have cities where we transport um, thousands or th tens of thousands of riders a day. And it impacts both the infrastructure, so the amount of servers we need, the, their availability, but also um, the mathematical problem of um, matching 60 riders with their drivers or thousands or th tens of thousand riders with their drivers. Last but not least, now, <laughs> um, the culture. So when we expand in different geographies, it obviously also impacts the product and the modularity and complexity of the product. So I've taken one example, which is very, um, very obvious as you expand to Europe. Um, in the US, it's very common for every person to have a credit card. But as we expanded to Europe, we realized that it's very common in Europe to not have a credit card. And some riders don't even have a physical card at all, so not even a debit card. And that feature, when we decide to, to, to build it, we need to build it in a modular way, because we never know which city, which environment is going to need that feature. Um, all of this brings me to the final conclusion that there's no one-size-fits-all solution, right? Like, we need to build uh, features, we need to build a product that is very dynamic and that we can take parts of it and provide it to other partners. Some of them will be reusable, some of them will not be reusable for a few years' time until we find the right partner to, to, to provide it to. Um, I wanted to just even show you the vehicles that, um, that we integrated with um, and just see how different they are from one another, even on the physical level. So we need to cater to very different areas, very different uh, geos, um, and we need to do it in a very, um, very modular and very flexible way. And I hope that in a soft spot, you're going to see how we, how we do it. So, where do we go now? As we just saw, we have many scale-up challenges to cope with. Of course, we can't cover them all in 25-minute session, so I would like to choose one problem to focus on. Let's go back to the session main topic. How to scale your morning commute using Python. So if the company wants to scale up, means to launch new cities or create new service areas, it needs to find a good way to automate environment setup. So let's tackle it. What do we need for setting up a new environment? So we need a database, kind of database, to store all of our data. We need the cloud infrastructure in order to have servers. We need data and configurations that will reflect the difference between the environments. For example, as Shahar mentioned before, different payment methods. We need to deploy our code, which is kind of straightforward. And of course, we should test it. 
In this session, I would like to focus on cloud infrastructure setup using Amazon Web Services as the cloud provider. From now on, with your permission, I call it just AWS. So let's talk about our challenges. As Shaha mentioned before, we have a different use cases, which means that we need to deliver a different set of features for different environments. We have a different architectures. We have large-scale cities versus small-scale cities. We need to support multiple regions. We use, this is a very important word, because we want to reuse our code. We don't want to write any new code in the next environment setup. And of course, we want it to be cost efficient as much as we can. So all of these challenges requires us to have a multiple environment variations. Let's review quickly AWS basics um, that will help us um, later. So EC2 instance is a virtual machine in Amazon's cloud. Elastic load, Elastic load balancer, or ELB, is a load balancing service for AWS deployment. Auto scaling group, or ASG, logical grouping for the purpose of scaling and management EC2 instances, or ELBs. Launch configuration is a template used by ASG for launching EC2 instances. And health check is used to determine whether the instances are live or not. How many of you worked with Boto? By raising hands. OK, nice. So Boto is a Python package that provides interfaces to Amazon Web Services. We will create a Python script for basic environment setup using Boto. The basic environment will include Elastic Load Balancer, Health Check, Auto Scanning Group, and Launch Configuration. Let's review both the functions that we will use them later during the implementation. So we have the connect to region function, which connects to region. Uh, please pay attention that this function is different from service to service. Amazon provides us, sorry, Boto provides us uh, different Amazon services in each time. Create load balancer, create auto scaling group, and create launch configuration. So let's see some code. So this is the configuration file. And the reason that I show you this file first is because I want this file to be the only file I'll change during the next setup. I don't want to write any new code. So most of the parameters we've already covered, like health check parameters and launch configuration parameters. We have two important parameters that we didn't cover yet. Um, the scheme, which could be internal or internet facing, internal for internal services, and internet facing for external services, and security groups, which are basically virtual firewalls. In our main function, we will create ELB infrastructure, and then we'll create auto scaling group infrastructure. Please pay attention that we will use um, the ELB data, for example, the DNS name, in order to create the ASG infrastructure. Great, so this is the main function. As you all can see, all of the parameters come from the conf configuration file, maybe beside the AWS key, which we will need to provide the script in order to connect um, Amazon services. And there are two parts here in the function, create Elastic Load Balancer infrastructure and create Auto Scaling Group infrastructure. So let's go inside the Create Elastic Load Balancer infrastructure. So in this function, we will set up some parameters, and then we will create the Elastic Load Balancer. So first of all, we need to connect to the relevant AWS service, which in this case is ec2.elb. After this, we need to define the health check, on, health check object. Um, when we, we will use it later um, to configure the Elastic Load Balancer. Then we should determine the Elastic Load Balancer name due to uh, our organization naming convention. Then we pick up the relevant listeners. And in the end, we call the create a load balancer function. Let's go inside. This function is pretty simple. We just call the function that provided us by Boto. 
create load balancer, we'll give, give it the proper parameters, and then we can figure the health check because we want the elastic load balancer to know whether the instances are live or not. And then we return the load balancer because we need to use it later. So great, we finished with the load balancer creation. Now we have to close the connection and return the relevant values. Great, so back to the main function. Let's go to the second part of the function, create auto scaling group infrastructure for service. So in this function, we will create launch configuration and then create auto scaling group. As we saw before, we have to connect first this, the relevant service in this case is ec2.autoscale and we use it um, to create the launch configuration and the autoscaling group. Let's go inside the create launch configuration function. So in this function we will set up some parameters. We will create a launch configuration object that provided us by border. And then we'll, we will call the bottom function create land configuration and provide it the, the object we've just created. So same as before, we, we need to determine the object name, then we create the bottom object, and then we call the function and provide it the object we've just created. Let's go to the second function. Create auto scaling group. Again, set up some parameters, create the object that provided us by bottom, and call the function with the object we've just created. And the same as before, we determine the object name, then we create the object, and then we call the bottom function with the object we've just created um, to create the auto scaling group. Going back to the SG infrastructure function, and going back to the main function, and basically we've done. So, in a few minutes, we've just created a um, Python script for creating basic environment, which was pretty easy to use. It was simple, and most important, it was fast. So in this lecture, you heard about um, some background about our mobility state. You heard about the, v the VIA product and about its challenges in growing quickly and integrating with multiple services. Um, we took one specific problem of how we scale up um, and we solved it using code. Um, and you even saw some implementations. Um, that's basically it. Thank you. Um, it seems from your code that you're very tied to Amazon yeah. uh, or AWS. Yeah. Let, let's say you decide to switch to another cloud. You have to rewrite all of your code. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Simple as that. Yeah. <laughs> other question? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you consider to use Ansible or a uh, configuration of like there is a wall? Uh, I don't know how to say it, but a wall. Thing of infrastructure as a code. Yeah, we would like to go to this direction. So, so we are going in this direction. We haven't implemented it yet. So I wanted to talk about something that we already did. Thank you very much.